A British Airways flight takes off somewhere around the globe every 90 seconds. We fly to more than 200 cities around the world. Over 45 million passengers a year. A very, very big operation. Once the world's favourite airline... Good morning. Recent years have seen BA facing some turbulent times. Fresh allegations of dirty tricks. Massive disruption is thought to have been caused by a power surge. At a when we fail, of course we get criticism. The important thing is to learn from those mistakes and quickly. Competition in the skies has never been tougher and the stakes have never been higher. Competitors make us better. BA has to provide a better service. But now, in its centenary year, the company is setting off on a journey of its own. It's going to arrive a bit early. Earlier the better. To transform itself back into the world-class airline it once was. Everything has changed, apart from our salt and pepper. It's a tough world now in aviation, so we need to move on. As British Airways begins its multi-billion pound makeover, our cameras have been allowed exclusive access to all areas of the business. From the factories where the airline buys its state-of-the-art jets... I just think aeroplanes are beautiful. The aircraft can't fly until we've, we've completed this process. ..to the engineers who keep them in the air. When you're working on a plane that weighs 300 tonnes, there's going to be problems as we go through. If you can play an Xbox, you can push out a plane. From trouble at the top... I get pissed off when people criticise VA. If someone criticises VA, they're criticising me. ..to the teams on the ground... One of the machines has broken down. Do you know how to turn this off? I can't turn it off. And the people who keep the passengers smiling. If we don't deliver, the airline doesn't deliver. In this episode, is the arrival of the airline's new £300 million plane in for a bumpy landing? Yeah. That's going to be a bit of a challenge. Their design team, their engineering needs to assess and, and come up with a, a design solution for that. There's turbulence ahead as the pilots are put through their paces. Wind shear, wind shear, wind shear. Wind shear. Go around, wind shear ahead. And there's a flying visit from royalty, if the airline can get their HQ fit for a queen. All the crowds are in position, the press are here. What could possibly go wrong? Make a lot of noise when you see it. Any airline the size and scale of British Airways faces threats to its reputation. BA has faced a lot of challenges throughout its 100 years of history. And it's gone through wars, it has gone through major financial events, terrorism acts. Uh, it's gone through everything. The last few years have seen BA dealing with costly IT issues. They say they have now resolved the technical issue and flights are returning to normal. A record fine from the Information Commissioner. 380,000 customers caught up in the colossal data breach. And threats of industrial action from a pilot's union. But while the airline contends with those current concerns, it also has to look to the future and the next chapter in its history. And that story starts here in southern France. This is the Airbus final assembly line in Toulouse, or as it's known by the people who work here, the FAL. Currently around us there are seven aircraft in uh, different stages of build. The way we build aircraft is a kind of sophisticated airfix kit. In this gigantic building, the component parts of planes arrive from all over Europe before being assembled. The aircraft, when we've joined all the sections together, uh, typically occupy an area that's about that of a football pitch. So think of seven football pitches joined together. It's phenomenal, the logistics of this aeroplane. You know, the work share across Europe, you think we've got, I think, six or seven different plants that all these major constituent assemblies, these sections are coming from, and all coming to on time, on quality, to be put together in the final assembly line here in Toulouse. They use belugas, obviously, to ship the sections on frequent daily flights. Um, yeah, so it's something special. Beluga is the name given to these specially adapted A300s that fly the various sections in for assembly. On the production line today is BA's very first Airbus A350, and the person responsible for overseeing the build is the airline's man on the ground, Richard Mee. I've been here three years now, right from the beginning of the 350 programme. This aircraft actually started production at section level back in uh, July last year. 
typically from the, the first components that arrive here, which are, are in fact completed sections or completed wings, that goes quite quickly. So from that point to delivery, we're talking four to five months. Each pre-manufactured section of the A350 is numbered and must be assembled in precisely the right order. So we start off with the heart of the structure, which is called the centre wing box, which is this area here. We then add sections at the forward fuselage, which is 11 to 14, and the aft fuselage, 15 to 19. Whilst that's being built, the wings are being produced in Broughton in the UK, um, and then they're sh shipped to uh, Bremen in Germany for equipping, where they fit all the flight control surfaces, actuators, piping, etc. Um, and then you've got the VTP, and the HTP, so that's the vertical tailplane, the horizontal tailplane, followed by the wing joining, landing gear on, and then we start with the engine installation uh, and all the production testing. The design and manufacture of aircraft like the A350 is helping to take the aviation industry to new levels of comfort and efficiency. This aircraft burns 25% less fuel than the aircraft it replaces, which means 25% lower carbon emissions and it's about 50% quieter. The direct competition is a Boeing 787. Two super efficient aeroplanes, composite based aeroplanes. Um, yeah, and, and to have a fleet comprising of both types is really advantageous for us as an airline. But the airline only benefits if the plane is ready on time. This first aircraft for BA is uh, two to three months away from delivery as, as we see it today. We've got no tolerance to a delay. Uh, it's critically important for us to deliver on time and on quality because for an airline uh, that two to three months is well within the time frame where they're already selling tickets. Coming up, with just weeks until it takes to the skies, is the latest addition to the BA fleet in for a bumpy ride? Uh, no, it's, that's not what we agreed. We agreed that this uh, nylon stoppers are going to be installed here. And will the new planes pilots make heavy weather of their simulator training? Wind shear, wind shear, wind shear. Go around. Every six months, each of the airline's four and a half thousand pilots has to come here, to the sim hall. A former hangar that's been converted into a state-of-the-art training facility. These simulators cost over £10 million each, and the airline has 16 of them, so the pilots can practice on every type of aircraft in the fleet. This is where pilots hone their skills, and of regular routine checks every six months, those skills are rechecked. Today, Phil is putting two experienced pilots through their paces. They're part of a group of hand-picked crew who will get to fly the brand new A350 when it arrives. But will they reach the required standard? They're highly experienced A380 pilots, and so we are doing a relatively short conversion just to highlight the fundamental differences so that they can fly that aircraft seamlessly and to the best of its advantage. It's strangely familiar. Hmm. What a standby. There's always that slightly schoolboy smile about it because it is just an amazing piece of equipment and it's an amazing opportunity that we have day in, day out just to work with this kind of equipment. One. Sim experience is a regular part of a pilot's training, because as the planes become more advanced, the pilots have to keep up. Okay, guys, are you ready to run? The whole point is technology is so reliable nowadays that pilots don't get the exposure they may have historically had to dealing with unusual situations. So every six months they, they are brought into the simulators and they are challenged with unusual situations so they can maintain and hone their management and flying skills. Yeah, yeah, really? Simulators are about being prepared for every eventuality and it's the beauty of the fact that we can put guys into simulators and create things that we would never see in a career and it means that we can give the pilots confidence in what they're doing and they can experience stuff without ever putting a threat to an aeroplane. Traffic, traffic, level off. Sim realism is something we absolutely strive for because the more believable it is, then therefore the more our pilots can react appropriately rather than thinking, oh, I'm only in the simulator. And we really do, our pilots come out and you will see beads of sweat from the guys. The guys will show real physiological reactions to the fact that they feel like they're in a real aeroplane. 
Now, after just an hour at the controls, the real test for the pilots is about to begin. OK, then, guys, so we're going to look at wind shear now, wind shear recovery in the aircraft protections. We're going to start exploring some unpleasant environmental conditions. So I'm going to set a storm up to the northwest of the airfield and very unpleasant winds, which will make the aircraft unpleasant to fly. Although rare, wind shear poses a very real threat to planes, especially during takeoff and landing, when it can make the aircraft difficult to control. So it's time to see if our pilots today have got what it takes. Wind shear, wind shear, wind shear. British Airways has a long association with the royal family, from state visits to the official opening of their London headquarters. And to mark their 100th anniversary, the airline is preparing for a very special visit. Right, everyone, five o'clock. We've got the Queen coming in the morning. We've got a lot to do before then. David Granger is part of the team responsible for making sure the visit goes without a hitch. But with less than 24 hours to go, will the HQ be ready on time? Okay. Right, uh, going to run through some of the main actions. Uh, the trackway is installed, so we've got about 200 metre trackway in the building now. Uh, we've got... Another key member of the team, and the man responsible for coordinating the whole visit, is Sam Pritchard, a man with an eye for detail. Waterside models are scratched. Are these guys moving the furniture out? I think we need to declutter this a little bit. And we're happy with that plant remaining there? I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I don't know whether that's a good thing or not, but maybe for a royal event, being a perfectionist might be a good idea. That looks straight to you. Yeah. Why are those ones much lower and these ones much higher? Because they need to be twisted and stretched. Oh. The distance is the same. Oh, really? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, so we need to twist and stretch? It's definitely the most exciting thing that's happened here since I've been working in this office, and I've been working in this office for almost 10 years. Uh, we're closing down the whole office, so about 3,500 people who normally work here uh, won't be coming in to work, uh, but we have 1,000 invited guests, um, and they'll be joining in the centenary celebrations uh, of the Queen's visit. But shutting down the head office of an airline isn't straightforward. Obviously, there are some people that need to be in the building um, because without them, the planes wouldn't take off. So we have, we've had to make special arrangements for those, for those to be in the building. Um, but there are also quite, um, quite detailed security requirements in terms of um, access and uh, how people get into the building, what time they arrive. Um, so even that, as a logistical exercise, has been pretty complex. One of the biggest challenges for the team is the building itself. This building is built with a cobbled street through the middle, which obviously isn't the uh, most ideal for a 93-year-old head of state to walk through. So we've had to put a temporary flooring down, which is being covered as we speak. The building has to be ready on time for the Queen's visit, so the airline has brought in an army of workers. So we've got 10 rolls, so it works about 700 square metres of carpet. So give or take a little bit of waste here and there. But with the flooring still going down and time marching on, David has already spotted a problem. There's an area of cobbles which we are carpeting. Uh, unfortunately, because of the slope into the centre of our building, there's uh, an uneven part of the walkway. It's perfectly safe to walk on now, but we obviously want to make sure it's as, uh, as sound as, as possible. And complications like these can have a massive effect on the team's already tight schedule. We've still got a lot to do. Logistical stuff like hanging bunting, uh, putting up barriers uh, for, for the guests and the walkways. Uh, we've got to put up signage, so because we're changing how the building is operated, so we need to make sure people know where they're going on the day as well. So, What time do you want to do the signage? Uh, after this. After 7 o'clock. After we've had pizza? OK. Right, carry on. So when I was put onto this, Three or four weeks ago, I was told, oh, it's, it's just a small thing on the side, on, on the side of your other project. It'll be about, be about two hours a week. Uh, and it's basically sort of taken over everything. Um, David said to me the other day that he's seen me more than he's seen his wife recently. I don't know what that says about our working relationship or his relationship with his wife. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. <son. laughs> and they'll be seeing even more of each other as they battle through their list of jobs. So we've still got a lot to do. We've got uh, a flag to put up before we lose sunlight outside. We've got it the right way up. I hope so. Type so. Big white band at the top. Yeah. yeah. We've got yeah. ex-military man here, so... <laughs> Would you like me to say a few words? 
<laughs> oh, look at the flag, flying fantastically well. That wind we ordered. I'm a little bit nervous that the evening is carrying on. It's getting a bit later, and I'm aware that there is a lot to get done, and you know, I'm not leaving until it's done. Back in the sim hall, and Captain Phil Ticehurst is about to take the Airbus A350 training to a new level by simulating a challenging scenario for any pilot. Wind shear. A thunderstorm or something of that type will have very strong forces, often down and out. Those rapid changes in wind is a wind shear. So we're, we're creating a real disturbance in what is naturally making the aircraft fly smoothly. OK, then, guys, I've created a storm which is out to the northwest of the airfield. What are your first thoughts in terms of a go-around? We negotiate something with ATC that if we needed to go around, we'd, we'd want to go off the left, maybe. Absolutely that. Fortunately, these aircraft have incredible sensors on them where it will actually sense those threats and give the pilots an early warning so that they can then manoeuvre away from the threat. That heading's probably good if we have to go around. The challenge as pilots is first to understand the technology they've got, but also to embrace that within their normal human skills to react at a controlled pace. So the aircraft will tell him that there's a wind shear issue ahead. Mike will respond, wind shear toga. Toga is a short name for takeoff go around power. So Mike will initiate an aborted landing, a go around, by calling wind shear toga. Wind shear, wind shear, wind shear. Alpha 4 SRS, go around track. Okay. Go around, winch here ahead. So we can create pretty much anything. We can basically change the weather to our needs. We can create storms, snow, sunshine, sandstorms. Uh, we can even create bird strikes, so we can have, uh, have birds come near the aircraft. And we can also create a, a host of failures beyond just engine failures, technical failures, electrical failures, all of which is designed to challenge the pilot. The scenario we just carried out in the simulator is something that could happen. Uh, it doesn't happen very often. I've had blustery days, but I've not met as severe conditions as we've just practiced in just now. So not surprising, our two guys, they're very experienced Airbus pilots. They had a very good day out today. Great performance from both of them. When the first aircraft's ready for delivery, they will most likely be the guys that bring our first aircraft over. Everyone's very excited about it. Um, it's, it's personally a privilege. Um, and uh, a, a challenge that everyone wants to, to meet. I can't wait for it to turn up. The, uh, the simulator's great, but there's nothing like getting your hands on the real aircraft when you can actually smell the jet fuel. At Waterside, the airline's HQ near Heathrow, the team are busy preparing for tomorrow's very special guest. The Queen will be arriving uh, on site just after 11 o'clock. She'll be stopping uh, at the Waterside model, so she'll be seeing a model of the building she is in. Uh, she will then be visiting the Speedbird Centre, where we've got lots of BA memorabilia from our 100 years of history. The Speedbird Centre houses the airline's heritage collection, and in honour of Her Majesty's visit, they've laid on a special exhibition of some previous royal encounters. In 1947, she came down to London Airport to name a, uh, an aircraft. It was named Elizabeth England. And here she is actually performing the ceremony by pouring some cider over the aircraft nose. But this is the original paperwork from the arrangements of the day, saying the princess will be happy to come and name your aircraft for you. At the end of the visit here, we'll ask her to sign the Royal Visitors Book. We'll ask her to sign at the back here after that last flight from Singapore, which was in 2011. And there it is there, her signature back in 2011 with the prince. So she'll sit down, hopefully, and sign the next page so we can bring it up to date, which is rather nice. As part of the celebrations, the team will be displaying a unique piece of aviation history. One of the key things that we're uh, putting in place is Concord nose cone. So it normally sits in the quite discreet part of our headquarters. We're moving that from one end down to where the Queen and our chief executive and chairman will give a presentation and uh, unveiling off the plaque. But it wouldn't be complete without its pressure-sensing tip, known as a pitot tube. <laughs> and this pitot tube fits right on the nose of Concorde, and actually we're going to attach it with our colleagues from properties onto actual Concorde radome for Her Majesty to see when she comes down the street tomorrow. 
Hello, Jim. Have you got the pito tube? Here it is. Oh, so okay. Received in good order. Thank you, Jim. This is the tooth that covers it up there. So I need it back after Her Majesty's visit. In good order. Of course. Very we'll take good. very good care of it. Please. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Good luck. I'll come and see it. Okay, thank you. And with the final bit of the puzzle installed, this iconic piece of avionic history takes pride of place. So, with the nose cone assembled, David and Sam can now walk the route the Queen will take in the morning. But it's not long before there's another issue. We're just looking here, we've got a drop down here, so we're just talking about whether we put tape along it or we uh, let Alex know that uh, there's a drop. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, the brief is to have basically a, a, a completely smooth walkway all the way through. And just because we've got a little bit of a step into one of her, one of her stops, and we've just got to basically tell Alex, who's escorting her around, who's the CEO, uh, to make sure that he basically tells her about the step. Finally, David and Sam call it a night and set off for a well earned rest. But with such a big day ahead, switching off might be a problem. I don't want to do auto tuning. It's how, how do we turn it off a television? This is so bad. If the Queen comes in and it says no stored channels found, <laughs> I mean, that is just not good. Now it says weak signal. We could just unplug it. Oh, look. Can I do that? Yeah. There are controls here, actually. Okay, that didn't do anything. <laughs> Me unplugging it didn't do anything. Because this is the first thing the Queen's going to see <laughs> when she walks into Waterside. And at the minute, it says, oh, yes, we got it off. <laughs> yes. Did that work? What did you, what did you do? What did you press? I took did power out. You took power out. <laughs> <laughs> right, next. Coming up, Judgment Day for the A350. Would the plane be up to scratch? Somebody's wondering about the screwdriver and, and dinging my lovely air. Well, yeah. And the impending royal visit calls for a bit of crowd control. If you're not a yellow, move to the side. If you're yellow, follow me. The airline has faced criticism in recent years for their long-haul business class, or as they call it, Club World, with some passengers claiming the cabin was dated. So with the arrival of the A350, the airline has refreshed the club cabin with a brand new seat, and it's made here in Northern Ireland. We're in the main assembly shop floor in Collins Airspace in Kilkeel. This facility has been manufacturing aircraft seats uh, since the mid-1960s. We produce about 120,000 seat places per year. Uh, that's roughly about a seat every two and a half minutes. Yes, we've had a long-standing relationship with British Airways. We've been manufacturing seats for them for at least the last 13 years. The current platform, the, uh, the Club World Suite, uh, has been two years in the development. Uh, and we've worked very closely with the BA team in delivering the product that they want. The A350 fleet will need over a thousand of these seats that have a host of new features, including a sliding door. We developed a, a unique safety feature for the door so, because the door has to be stowed during taxi takeoff and landing. Uh, it involves the, the movement of those two buttons by the, the cabin crew to deploy the door. But with so much riding on this seat, the airline wants to make sure the quality of the build is second to none. I have certain qualities that need to be met. There's certain things that BA like to see, so obviously all the stitching needs to be correctly. They all need to be in line. The headrest needs to be touching, and this bottom legrest cover needs to be touching the backrest. So when it's fully extended, it's the most comfortable. And then this side preference needs to be nice and tucked in, and no creases on it as well. Before it's signed off, Every aspect of the new seat, no matter how small, has to be checked and confirmed it matches with the specifications set by the airline. Yeah, so this is a force gauge. It's a resistance gauge. And we use it to check that the door is not too loose or it's not too tight. So this one's 7.7 .7 and our tolerance is 10, so we're well within tolerance. So this seat's going good so far. Uh, we don't currently have no defects in this seat, which is very good. So hopefully it'll stay that way. This is the, the 205th suite up the end of the production line. 
and it's now been boxed up it's through the quality uh, inspection and it's been boxed up now to be put on the truck and uh, taken across to Toulouse to be installed in the aircraft. Back in France, the last of the seats is being installed and the cabin is nearing completion, but there's no time to sit around. This is the first A350 that we deliver in uh, July and it's the first of 18 aircraft. And for me personally, seeing all the hard work over the past four to five years coming together and there's actually the output from that, I think it's just been great. Now that the interior has been kitted out, the moment of truth has arrived and so have BA's inspection team. How are you doing, mate? All right? They're here to make sure the airline is getting exactly what they've ordered. This is the opportunity for us to review this cabin, and it needs to be perfect. We've got some technical experts from engineering, but also the product and design team, so they'll be able to inspect and confirm that, you know, what, what we've got is what we, uh, what we signed up to. So at the moment, I'm just checking that the door uh, runs freely on its runners. There's no bumps, there's no shuddering, it's a smooth, free movement, no noises as it does that. And then the other thing I'm checking is for the latching that it goes into its correct takeoff and landing positions. But just when things look like they're running smoothly, there's always a catch. Just the latching mechanism, it's a bit stiff. I'm not happy with that, so we'll get the seat manufacturer to have a look at it, or for Airbus, because they've done the installation, and they'll have to continue to work it until we get exactly what we're looking for. We've got a real specific attention to detail, right down to the trim finish. It's absolutely meticulously inspected. Let's be honest, I'm not expecting to find a seat missing, but if we find something today or any other team find a defect today, we have a, what we call a customer logbook, and we can raise that defect or finding an Airbus, and the suppliers together must collectively come up with a solution to that. So I'm just going to look at what they call the non-textile flooring. So it's called NTF and it's in the galleys. And we're going to have a look at that, making sure it's been installed correctly. And it's not long before Richard spots a problem. That aft corner seems missing sealant. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, right now. So it's just for the sealant finish. It's not uniform across the back. It's obviously been a galley area, wet area. You know, it's imperative that, you know, it's going to function. So they just need to reapply some sealant there, really. So every minute flaw is now being pointed out and logged. But could this lead to some hard feelings? It's about having those really difficult conversations and then we can say that we've delivered the best aircraft, the best A350, the best product for the airline. Uh, no, we, that's not what we agreed. What we agreed is that nylon stoppers are going to be installed here to avoid flashing the door and just moving at the left hand side. That's the challenge, you know, it's about doing the right thing. They want to do the right thing for Airbus. They want to deliver a world-class product. We want to receive that and operate it, you know, and our passengers want to share that experience. Did we know about this, Danny Sharp, what we're saying? No, we knew well, about this, this plan. This is the first time I've ever seen this. Yeah. What I'm lost with is, yeah. was this not proposed, you know, with part of the acceptance that this is what the athletic look's going to be in? No, not, no, this, not, right, this, okay. detail, not this detail. Right, right. Okay. As the inspection continues, the list of imperfections gets longer. Really? No uh, one can just you know, open this door for us. I, you know, told me that they have an issue to put uh, yeah. the, the panel. This door should be a push latch, so you push it, should open, it doesn't do that. This latch is too hard. The blackheads are not colour matching with the background. And this is a custom facing um, monument, so it has to be absolutely perfect. But despite how it might look on paper, the team are actually very impressed with the work so far. Yeah, genuinely a bit of a wow factor. You know, first time you see it, it is an impressive cabin. Some minor adjustments to make, raised some points throughout the team. Um, but so far, so good. With any aircraft delivery, there's always risk. Anything could go wrong at the last minute. That's just the nature of a delivery it's of a, a brand new aircraft. Um, and it does put pressure on us as a delivery team. And that's because passengers are already booking seats on this plane's first flight in just 10 weeks' time. We have a full programme back at Heathrow waiting for this aircraft to, to deliver. So with the plane nearing completion and its pilots up to speed, it just remains for the airline to make sure its roster of cabin crew are prepped for the big arrival. Although all aircraft follow the same basic design, the crew must be familiar with every subtle difference between makes and models. If the cabin crew aren't ready, the plane doesn't fly. So I'm here today to do a training course for the A350 
for a group of our current cabin crew members who will be picking up the A350 as a new aircraft type. So some of the systems will be new for them, some of them it will be familiar stuff. Today's course focuses on a key feature, the new plane's door. Welcome to your A350 door. Uh, you're all used to operating on the single aisle Airbus, so you'll find that this door is very similar to what you're used to with a single aisle Airbus. There's just a couple of extra little bits and pieces. The mode selector will be... We'll be assessing them practically throughout the course, but at the very end there will be a knowledge check, and the knowledge check is a pass or fail. What's the first thing that I need to check? Check Yep, so quick look to make sure my door is locked, which it is, and then... I think the doors is always the thing that everybody worries about. There's so many little bits to it, and having to do everything in the right sequence in the right order, that can be um, a bit of a challenge when you're being assessed on it, if you like. It's a mechanism for getting our customers on and off the aircraft, but it's also a mechanism for getting our customers and ourselves off the aircraft in an emergency situation. So it's, it is a piece of emergency equipment. But does Helen think they're ready for the real thing? They were absolutely brilliant delegates. The experience of flying on the Airbus obviously came through, so they were able to transpose their knowledge onto the new aircraft type, which is absolutely brilliant. We've got a few more bits to do on the rest of the course. Make sure they're ready for that validation at the end of tomorrow. But on the door side of things, they're going to be good crew. It's the early hours of the morning at the airline's head office. Uh, the time is 4.36 a.m. I'm feeling OK, considering I only had one hour sleep. There's still quite a lot to do. Um, before the marshals arrive at about six. So we've got to put some of the barriers out, some of the signage out. In less than seven hours, Her Majesty the Queen will be arriving at Waterside, and the team have got their work cut out to make all the final arrangements. Hello, how are we? You all right? Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are we? Seems like only a few hours since I last saw you. First job of the day is get the checklist set. <laughs> It's our birthday and the, the Queen's coming to our party, so yeah. what more could you want than that, really? So, <laughs> it's fantastic. As guests and staff begin to arrive, it's up to Sam to keep the registration process on track. Everybody coming up here and also everybody coming in there, just send them over to registration. OK. Thank you. We've got just over four hours left, so it's 7 o'clock, so we've got 20 minutes to the security checks and clearance once that's done. Um, It'll be a lot less stressful, I think. So as David and the police begin the security sweep, Sam is at the other end of the building. Good morning, Sam. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. Are you all right? Where he has an appointment with the boss. It's an incredible, exciting day. Uh, I've just saw hundreds of colleagues. They've come really early into the office. Um, I think the level of excitement is incredible. Hello. How are you oh, doing? Good I'm to see you. Are you all right? Right. Really how are you feeling? Go. Think so. Feeling good? Fine, I think so. Yes. So we just talk through, the, uh, talk through the meat, okay. talk through the initial bit. As he'll be the one escorting the Queen around the building, Alex has to be alerted to last night's potential stumbling block. We will leave a marker, whether it's that specific white piece of tape or another piece but of tape, we'll make sure there will be a piece of tape that's on that bit. Yeah. I mean, that's the only place across the whole walk about that uh, has a bit of a step, really. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it seems Sam hasn't prepared for every eventuality. What about the ducks and the swan? Normally, <laughs> 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 they sometimes make make all the way all the way down. Yeah, we, the we haven't we haven't made any special arrangements for the ducks. <laughs> Although they, they are just kind show of, up. Yeah. <laughs> As part of the visit, selected airline staff will be meeting the Queen. Would you be able to tell everyone to be well behaved? <laughs> So there's just time to brush up on a bit of royal etiquette. So when you're presented to the Queen, um, you can either just bow, which is not a full bow from the waist, but just a short bow from the neck, or you can curtsy, which generally is right leg behind left and dip. Um, please don't touch Her Majesty. <laughs> um, only shake her hand if she offers it. Um, and as I'm sure you've all seen multiple um, greetings, she, it's, it's a very gentle handshake. There's no sort of pumping of arms. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sam has to get the first batch of spectators into position. We need to put the yellows in. They're all out of order now. Everybody needs to get out of the toilets and back into the canteen. Oh, gosh. We treat everybody. All yellow lanyards. We all yellow, yellow lanyards. Marshals. Uh, here are the yellow marshals. They're ready.
If you're not a yellow, move to the side. If you're yellow, follow me. All yellows, yeah. This is the busiest bit because this is the biggest group and it's the most chaotic because we've got all the people in the restaurant. So it will be less chaotic after this. As Alex puts the last minute touches to his speech, the rest of the guests have to be moved into place. OK, we're ready for the green. OK, greens, everybody, follow me. Right, so for 35 minutes to go, we're just doing a couple of final tweets, making sure that everybody's in the right place. I'm going to go and get a management committee who are going to meet the Queen first. And they're hopefully now waiting for us, so we're just going to go and get them. OK, so are you ready? Yeah. Do it off the carpet, please, off the carpet, yeah. <laughs> Alex is there, the Lord Lieutenant is there, the MC are there, all the colleague meet and greet groups are there. All the crowds are in position, the press are here. What could possibly go wrong? Coming up, with the royal party on final approach, there's excitement at the airline's HQ. The Queen is in the building, ladies and gentlemen. And there's a new arrival as BA's brand new A350 finally touches down. Back in Toulouse, and the airline is about to take delivery of its new plane. It's had a final coat of paint, and build and delivery manager Richard has been checking that the issues spotted in the cabin inspection have been sorted. One of the first ones we found was uh, on the galley ovens. We found it clashing with the door. Um, so they've got some door limiters installed now. So as you can see, there's no contact there. One of the other items that we found during the cabin final inspection was the sealant finish in the galley area. It's crucial that this is watertight. So they've redone all the sealant to ensure that that is the case. We had a slight issue just with the latching on the sliding door, which is a new feature of the seat. And as you can see, that's all been resolved now. Works perfectly. Final check of the Club World kitchen. As you can see, all those final touches have now been corrected. Everything's finalised and it's perfect, absolutely spot on. So with the official seal of approval, the plane can begin its short journey to Heathrow before it starts its long haul career. It's a very proud moment for me um, and the rest of the airline. You can imagine how much work has gone into preparing the base. Um, the, the, the facility here, we've had to get the infrastructure ready for the aircraft. The engineers here, they're now A350 licensed, so they can now work on the aircraft and make sure that the aircraft is serviceable for our operation. And even having these new markings on the ground are so important. And again, it takes quite a lot of time and effort to do that and planning. Before long, the new aircraft makes its entrance. 50, 40, 30. It's a long time coming. It's been fantastic to actually finally get my hands on the aircraft. I mean, uh, not just myself, but the whole airline has spent an awful lot of time preparing for the arrival of the aircraft. To, to finally get to the day when we bring it to Heathrow, you know, marks the closing of one chapter and the beginning of another, really, for, for the airline. With the plane in position, an excited staff and press get a chance to take a look on board. It's a complete step up from the old football cabin for sure. Yeah, you can still smell the kind of brand new airplane smell, which is great. For us nerds, that's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> the press have been all over the cabin today and they've absolutely loved it and all the, the, the feedback I'm getting so far is really positive. Definitely feels wider, doesn't it? It does feel wider. We've spent extra time with the cabin crew going through all the different stowages, really getting to know the aircraft so we can explain to all the other cabin crew and all the other instructors exactly how the aircraft works. Richard has even flown over from Toulouse to welcome the boss on board. And what do you think of the suite itself? The club suite? Oh, yeah, it's great, it's huge. The fact that you can be watching TV throughout the whole time. Excellent. Uh, makes, makes a huge difference. What, what's most exciting to you? The most exciting bit for me, I think, is the sliding door feature. I think the guys in design have done a, a fantastic job. I mean, this is super exciting. Um, this is really where, where we want to be. To see the aircraft now finally at its brand new home at Heathrow is just a very proud moment, but also exciting. I will never forget this day for, for the rest of my life. But for Richard, it's not quite the end of the story. You know, it's a sense of pride more than anything for us, but we've got another 17 of these to deliver, so my job's not even halfway through. Um, so I look forward to that challenge that that brings.
back at the Airlines HQ, and after weeks of planning, the big moment has arrived. The Queen's visit is about to begin. Excited, really excited, really excited. And I'm really, really pleased, because there was a lot to do the last few days. I have spent a lot of time in this building. I'm excited, I can begin to relax, maybe. And finally, after all the hard work, Her Majesty arrives. She's here. She is, oh, she looks great. The Queen is in the building, ladies and gents. She is, this is great. Well done, Alex, well done. It's a sort of surreal. we get to see her again in a minute, so it's all right. But even now, Sam's job isn't over. We're we doing the plaque, moving the plaque. Good. It's amazing, it's a great way to mark our centenary, so really great to have her here. So this is the bit that she needs to pull. The Queen's got such a long history flying with us, and uh, I know the guys have put some spectacular stuff together. And as well as meeting and greeting staff in the Speedbird Centre, Her Majesty is reminded of the time she christened an aircraft with cider. Cider? Over, over the... <laughs> <laughs> uh, champagne? I think not. You got flags yet? Good flags. You make a lot of noise when she comes around, when, when you see her. But as they say, the best laid plans... We need to turn around. Alex has taken her the wrong way to the speech. And now she's coming back. <laughs> back so soon. <laughs> Momentarily, uh, she went on a slightly extended route. Offic official spokesman says. It now gives me great pleasure to invite you, ma'am, to unveil the plaque to mark this historic visit. And then, after marking a hundred years of the airline, the Queen departs for her next royal engagement. That was great. I mean, the enthusiasm uh, from everyone at BA and from her. She was asking questions from our staff. An incredible event. It went by really quickly, but it was really fantastic. Those individual conversations she had with engineers, with pilots, cabin crew, um, the time that she spent here in our museum, looking at her own history through the pictures that, that we have. She has spent quite a bit of time with us, and, and I think she really enjoyed it. Well, it was a bit of a blur, but a wonderful blur, actually. And of course, the day wouldn't have been complete without that all-important signature. So that's her signature today. Huge success. It's an absolute privilege to be part of it. Uh, everything went to plan. Uh, the only minor tweak was the slightly longer walking route, but I think that was fine. Everybody laughed at that. I think even the Queen gave us a smile, so that was good. It meant I got to see her a couple more times, so can't complain of that. <laughs> I have to tell you, I was so excited. And uh, in my head, I just wanted to make sure that we were covering everything. And uh, I forgot I had to give a speech. <laughs> but we recovered, uh, we recovered, and I... I it was a really rewarding experience to see everyone there and to welcome her uh, and to cheer for her. I think it was, it was fantastic. <laughs>